Good morning, it's Rachel with Central Texas Zone 8B and here I am at the property garden and I'm gonna do a little garden tour. It is the beginning of March, sorry. If you're, if you're at all like me, you never know what day or month it is and normally aren't quite aware of the time either. Even when I work and I have to like write the date over and over and over again, I still won't remember. <laughs> What remember the date is. Um, anyhow, beginning of March, um, this is, you know, pretty wintry garden tour, and I'm just going to go over what is um, kind of putting on buds here in the garden right now, and then projects I have coming up, and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So this is what the garden's currently looking right, like uh, right now. Uh, a lot of... Uh, stuff is sorry excuse me dead and dying here sort of or not not that it needs to be cut back i had left this um i have um a palace castle right here and then one over here as well and i had left those in place um for the whole winter because they did add a lot of structure and they've just really they started to have some dead bits um really bad um, just recently with the last freeze this other one over here is still going quite strong really um, I uh, might just cut that back just a little bit but this one I'm going to cut back all the way um, probably about ooh, six to eight inches from the ground um, here soon I'm also going to cut back my lantanas um, I have quite a few of those sprinkled around there's another lantana over here and then there's another one here, um, and then I think I have one somewhere over there. Uh, but yeah, I wait to the end of uh, winter to cut those back. So those are gonna cut, get cut back here soon um, in the Paros Castle, and that, that'll um, reinvigorate that. And it, it also, I mean, that thing kind of can become quite the beast, which is what I want really for this space. It's, I mean, this garden is, this lot is so large like it uh, having a giant beast of a plant is actually kind of desirable in this case um uh it just makes a statement um so i would like that to get nice and large however it did uh die a lot like all the way around the plant here and so little bits are alive at the base and then in the center but just to reinvigorate it and and um stuff i'm gonna go ahead and cut that all the way back and then a project I have coming up here soon is to replace this um, plastic uh, garden lining I have. I just didn't really like the look of it. Um, it was kind of something that was they, uh, my uh, in-laws had already here. And so I started to use it and then I was just like, you know what, it doesn't really match kind of the style of the garden. So I'm gonna replace it. I might use it in another spot, but I'm gonna replace it with this um, metal edging here that I got off Wayfair. I think it's just called metal garden edging. I'm not entirely sure. You can get it in, I think, three inches, six inches, and 12 inches. And so I've used that in quite a few places. Um, you can also get it in galvanized steel, which if you look over here at the cut flower bed that I'm building, I had thought I'd bought it. <laughs> this, is where, <laughs> this is where my, uh, my absent-mindedness and just general kind of not paying attention kind of really comes into play. Um, I bought it, uh, the initial pieces that were, are rusted on the back side. I bought those at a different time than these other pieces up here. And I bought the rusted version, which is what I wanted. And then the second time I went in to buy more to make the, the bed a little bigger after I decided I wanted to make it larger, I bought the galvanized version. And I didn't realize that until after several rains. And I'm like, why isn't this rusting? And I'm like, oh. It's not rusting because I am a dodo. So anyhow, <laughs> that's what uh, happened there. But oh well, um, I already built it and it's just, you know, once it spills over the flowers, I don't know, it just kind of adds to the rustic shabby chicness of this garden, I guess. <laughs> um, this stuff over here is um, part of my husband's grandma's garden. She does vegetable gardening here. So um, that's, that's her stuff over here. And then um, this is where I kind of my garden back here. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to kind of change the shape a tiny bit. You can see a few areas like over here where I've kind of popped it out more. And then over here, I'm widening it as well. So I'm changing the shape a tiny bit, um, but not too much. It's just like a bit, about a foot and a half there or so. And then 
over there. Uh, so I had cut back these um, uh, dianthus and uh, I planted viola. As you can see, we have some little teeny tiny blooms on those. <laughs> um, a few of them died from the ones we planted, but most of them I cut them back and they're coming back strong. Um, I do need to, we just had a freeze here as y'all who live in Texas know, and I do need to come back and cut off some more dead stuff. Um, but most of the dianthus is coming back and should hopefully be in bloom here soon. Um, quite a few of the ones over here, uh, the violas on, that I planted over here didn't make it. So you can see there's one right there, sad little thing. But this one actually is growing back from the base, this little one. So, and so is that little one. So, okay, we'll see what, we'll see what comes up. It's kind of a waiting game. Um, anyhow, I've, uh, before I kind of walked around, uh, or before I started the video, I uh, walked around and I looked for little um, buds and signs of life and quite a few, like the uh, the things are starting to kind of get little buds on them and stuff and uh, just the, not like they're the greenery showing or anything like that, but you can just tell that the buds are swelling, like on the Shoal Creek Vitex, I see some and, um, Thing. So, and then here is, this is the bank of yarrow right here and that they look like they're dead, but if you get up close, you can see there's greenery in there. So quite a bit of greenery and comeback. And then that other one is doing really good. And I don't know what the difference is on, <laughs> it's probably just older and further along. Um, and then of course this Greg's um, mist flower needs to be cut back, but I can see little signs of life here at the base. It's definitely, I mean, this stuff is, if y'all don't aren't have y'all haven't worked with this stuff before it's very intense and it definitely um will take over a space so plant it with caution but um if you have a space that you need um a hardy plant that kind of takes over and it does kind of flop and um uh but the flowers t typically stand straight up and and it uh you can kind of tell right here it kind of flopped oops sorry messing with the camera sorry flopped over but the flowers stand the flower head stands straight up so it kind of has this kind of cascading sort of effect but uh so it probably would do well in pots I don't think I've ever tried it in a planter but anyhow I will walk down this little dry river bed that I desperately need to weed um the uh drift roses are doing quite well um they're starting to show a lot of new signs of life these are the little uh, little messy dwarf boxwoods I just popped in the ground. Um, uh, you saw in the last video, I did that about um, a week ago. Um, and then there's the Harbor Bell Nandinas. Uh, I never got around to planting the last two, which I am going to plant here and here, kind of. Um, I'll try to do that soon. Um, I had to leave town for a little while, went on an anniversary trip with my husband. It's been a long time since we got to celebrate um, anything, so we uh, got to get out and away from the kids for a little bit and just get a chance to just miss them and enjoy each other <laughs> too and just have a fun time. So we did that and that was really great. We went to go see some garden spaces too, which was fun. Um, but anyhow, so this um, Shoal Creek Vitex is starting to show some little i don't know if you can see this let's see those buds are starting to swell on this a little bit so that's definitely exciting um this is a hibiscus and it looks dead doesn't it but it's very supple i guess i don't know how you would call that but um it's not it's very bendy it's not they're not snapping or anything like that there's no crunchiness to it so i'm pretty excited about that but as you can see here i feel like you can kind of get a better idea there's the uh garden edging i'm going to be placing in i need a little bit extra for right here oops right um right here but um i have plenty um here's another hibiscus that is getting some oh yeah that has some green on it too i don't know if you can tell from the video but it's got some green on it and then this is the raspberry smoothie Ooh, I'm so excited about this. I've never seen them flower um, before. Those are obviously very new and tiny, but I'm very excited. Um, I do need to trim back the butterfly bush a little bit. Um, I do want that butterfly bush to get big. I know people are like, oh, they get six feet and up and stuff. Like, I I want that in this space. Um, I, I, I might even trim it like a little tree. I don't know. I might experiment with that. Um, 
this guy is, I think this is still alive. Um, it's pretty, pretty bendy. Oh no, well that one wasn't, but it's, most of it's still bendy. So this is the, hold on, let me see here. What is this? Uh, the Japanese snow bell. So I got that from Fast Growing Trees. Two of the, um, well, hold on, I'll get on that in a second. Um, so here's the uh, cut flower bed. I'm going to fill that with dirt here soon. That's another project coming up. And then I'll show you this um, shed here. The next project I have planned um, next on the docket is to uh, remake the outside of this. I'm going to paint it and put little um, tiny, tiny little beds in here. Maybe put some steps here. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and I have a little, those are my last little bits of plants I didn't get stuck in the ground before um, leaving town. And then I'm gonna make a um, mulch pathway leading up to the shed. So I'm really excited about that. It's kinda gonna just make this shed. I mean, the shed's like 20 years old and hasn't been touched and needs some love. And so I'm going to fix it up here a little bit. I'm excited about that. So uh, one thing I did not film, um, I fil I did film the these rose bushes, putting in these rose bushes, but I, what I didn't film, I just kinda needed to, get them in the ground really fast before I left town um, so they weren't sitting around was the plants I ended up putting in back along here so I'm going to go over those real fast. This is a Japanese maple and of course I took the tag off so I don't remember what kind it is but it's got a lot of um, buds on it so it's uh, it's coming along so um, there was a little bit of frost damage from this last week on the roses. Most of them did really good. This is a camellia here. And then I ended up putting that variegated privet here. So this area um, along this back fence really needs to get cleaned up. And um, my in-laws had had that side cleaned up last year. It used to look just like this. <laughs> and they had they paid someone to clean up that side and then they were gonna have this side cleaned up as well, but there was um, hornet's nests all in this stuff. And so the people didn't wanna clean it out. So I'm going to attempt to do it a little bit by a little bit by myself. We'll see how that goes. It really needs to be cleaned up. It's quite junky looking. Um, so anyhow, so there's the variegated privet right here. Um, this rose had a tiny bit of damage on it, but not, not too bad. And then there, you can barely see it, is another very teeny tiny, um, uh, words are failing me. This is the um, Camellia Polar Ice. Sorry, I'm not very good with the camera here. I'm, waving it all around. So this is the polar ice when it gets these pretty white blooms. This one had quite a bit of frost damage. I'm gonna have to come back in and snip that a little bit. Um, but everything else is doing really well. And then back here, I planted a green giant, arborvitae, and then a uh, the other variegated privet. And then there is a, I think it's a, right here, um, sergeant major or uh something uh camellia and it blooms these beautiful red blooms so just to kind of swing around and show you where we're out in the garden there's the upper bit or the pathway comes around here and we'll go over to the patio area or seating area fire pit so here's this um one bed i just had made a video about all the grasses are doing really good Everything looks quite pretty. I probably do need to come in and water stuff. This little, I love this little, this is um, a little ice plant um, and it's doing so well. It's lasted all winter long. It takes on this beautiful red foliage and uh, gets these red um, kind of disc flowers when it blooms. I think for these two pots, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I think I wanna cut the bottoms out of them and have them be kind of like raised planters and I might kind of rearrange them a little bit. We'll see. So, over here, you can see the bed that I'm going to build. I have to tack it in and then um, bring in some uh, um, soil, compost, and um, cardboard, and a little bit of mulch. It won't be as high as the edges, and um, just because I already have some plantings. Here I have it oh so easy. 
I think it's a hot paprika rose. Let's see here. Yeah. Oh, so easy hot paprika. And it's got a bunch of little, um, I'm sorry, buds on it. So that's cool. Um, a lot of these things need to be cut back. I don't know. There's um, quite a few lantanas in here. I always have a hard time knowing if a lantana is going to come back or not. Um, I'm not at all an expert on lantanas. <laughs> So we'll see um, if those are alive or not. This is a yarrow with red. I don't know the name, but it's still alive. It needs some cutback. Um, this is a sotal, I think is what, and I think there's, a, no, not a sotal. Uh, what am I? I don't remember the name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Tag things. Okay. Um, anyhow, uh, I've killed two varieties of the silver kind, but I have a green one at home. And the green one's beautiful. It's like this very bright uh, green with very soft looking foliage. And it's doing amazing. It has no irrigation, gets um, half day sun and just loves its life. And I think I will try to plant more of that one around, but I've killed two of the silver ones. So uh, yeah, there's that. There's a um, royal purple smoke bush right here. I don't know if that's alive. Um, there's the um, butterfly bush right here. I think that's the um, bicolored one. It has like the three different colors up the bloom stalks. And then this is, I think this is a lantana right here. Um, and then over here, you can see the row of um, weeping crepe myrtles, white weeping crepe myrtles that I planted. And uh, this area is still looking quite neat and tidy. So I'm very pleased with that. Let's see here. And then you can see here I've mapped out where the next garden bed is going to get planted up. I'm pretty excited about getting all this finally finished. It'll take me a while. I have to cement this into the ground, but I'm going to put that kind of up here with my other. I have um, Esperanza and then I, there's Esperanza over here. And then this is a prickly pear, purple prickly pear, and then I was going to place that up kind of behind the purpley prickly pear and um, uh, grow uh, some kind of honeysuckle or something on it. I'm not entirely sure what yet, but um, so I've just kind of been laying this cut flower bed out. Um, I haven't uh, tacked it in yet, um, but I hopefully will get that uh, the tacked in and get the dirt picked up and stuff here soon. Um, this area is kind of a little wild planting area. <laughs> Some of the stuff is still alive. I think that's, I think that's called Jerusalem sage. I could be totally, I'm probably totally wrong about that. I forget what that's called. And this is that, the little native, um, pepper plant right here. Chilean something. Don't, I have names, names don't do well with me. Um, uh, this is, um, is it rock rose? No, no, I call everything rock rose. That's not rock rose. Uh, I don't remember the name right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so as you can see back there, uh, I still have not gotten my husband to um, uh, stake those into the ground further for me yet. Um, we've just been really busy. It's not because he was super denying it, that he would do it or resistant to it. He actually... Um, agreed first time I asked him uh but we've just been busy and he hasn't been able to get back here to do that um and I haven't been nagging him about it or anything so it's not gonna happen anytime soon this little guy probably needs to get cut back I don't remember what that name is <laughs> sorry I'm so sorry I'm so bad at this uh this is still alive. It looks dead, but this is a Cape honeysuckle. Um, and then this is my um, climbing Don Juan rose. I will start tying it to the trellis here soon. I use um, Velcro, like it's like a soft Velcro uh, to tie my plants to um, the, uh, their, if I need to um, stake them or kind of contain them or, or pull them over or something. I like to use soft Velcro. It's an outdoor Velcro that I found on Amazon. I think it's like Gardner's Velcro or something and it's adjustable. You know, I like it cause it's adjustable. And so you, as the plant grows, you can kind of just adjust the piece so it doesn't um, cut into the plant at all. And I just think that's nice uh, option. So here are the three um, uh, cherry trees that I planted. Um, 
so I had a issue, you know, we had this deer fenced off. So I, um, but I had noticed that something kept coming and digging at the base of plants. And I'm like, okay, well, it's obviously not deer hoofing around at stuff or pawing at things. Um, but I don't know what it is. Um, but it had dug up a couple of these, um, on different, different occasions, it dug up, um, several of them uh, and up out of the ground and one of them I didn't this one over here I didn't get to for a few days because I didn't come out for a few days and um, excuse me my, I didn't notice that it was you know sitting out on the ground in fact I think if you watch one of my older videos I hadn't noticed yet that one of them was out of the ground and you can see it laying on the ground <laughs> in the background on one of my other garden tours or something just after I planted these. Um, and so that happened a couple times. And finally I went and got some kind of repel all powder or uh, granules that you sprinkle at the base of the, um, plants. And what it does is it gets into, um, that when the, when the rodents come they come to start digging around, it, they smell it. Um, and it, uh, kind of stings their nostrils. And so then they go away. It's like a, it's all natural. It's, a, um, and it doesn't hurt anything. It just kind of irritates the animals so they don't want to dig there. So anyhow, so eventually, I'll come back over here. Here's the weeping crepe myrtles. So eventually there will be a pathway through here to um, this little um, greenhouse that's going to be behind this trellis that I've built in that other video. But let's go check out this other side of the fence where I've planted the screenings, the wall screenings, I'll come around, I'll go around the, the long way because I haven't shown y'all some of the things I have planted out here. And I'm going to leave this big open expanse probably just empty for now. Um, I would like just to kind of have a wildflower meadow field. So we'll see, I might end up renting a tiller and till it and um, sprinkle wildflower mix and stuff for the ne next year, that, that's kind of in the long run and not something I'm like, this has to happen now. So this is a <sighs> crepe myrtle. It's a white bloom. It's the, it's a really common one. It's one that has, uh, grows really big and stuff. It's just a bunch of sticks right now. So we, uh, part of the issue was we had, um, I had this in the front yard at first and the deer just kept eating it and eating it and eating it and torturing it. So finally I moved it to the backyard and then over there, you can kind of see right here is the, actually that's the little white one that the deer kept torturing that I moved back here. And this one is a red rocket, I believe. So I have a white bloom and a red bloom back here. And then over here, you can see the deceased corpse, uh, corpse of a uh, tree that I had previously planted. I shadowed them away, sorry. And that the deer had ripped up and killed before we got um, deer fencing. So here is a red bud tree. No, it's not a red bud tree. Sorry, a red maple. Um, and it's already budded up. You can see the little buds on it here. I do need to kind of stake it because it's, uh, let's see, I don't know. let me stake it on the other side so you can kind of see better. There we go. It's budded up. I need to stake it because it's leaning quite badly. There. <laughs> and just reference on where we're at in the property way back at the back. Okay, swinging around. Sorry if that was a little too fast. So there's the um, arborvitae. This one is already, looks like it's, gosh, it looks like it's grown since I put it in the ground. I know that's not possible, but it looks happy. I think it's probably just happy to be in the ground. This one too, looks happy to be in the ground. So I think those will put on a lot of growth this year. And then Here's this silver smoke cypress, and I can tell, you can tell some animal has been digging at it because look, it's completely sideways, and then there's a big dig hole right there. So something definitely came and pulled at that and pushed it around. Well, I'll have to come back and fix that. This is my forsythia over here. Let's see how it's doing. It's budding up a little bit or something maybe. I don't know. No, no, that's dead. Sorry. No, that's, that's got little, you're discovering if this is a lie with me. I haven't, um, I haven't come back here yet. So this is my first time checking on these in over a week. 
Um, let's see. So the butterfly bush is still doing awesome right here. That's looking good. And then there's the other butterfly bush over here is also looking really good. Very happy and healthy. A little bit of yellowing from that frost, but not too bad. And uh, the Texas sage, I think this is Silverado. It's doing good. That is a fire bush right there. That is fine. That stuff is um, very uh, hardy. <laughs> um, and then there's the green cloud that I planted and then I'm very excited to go to, oh yeah, here's the butterfly brush that had broken off. And as you can see, it's still fine and doing good. It will recover quickly. Okay, and then here is the, I'm excited to check on this. This is the uh, eucalyptus funky monkey, the cold hardy one and it looks great. Look at that, I love this little thing. I'm so excited about this. I, I really like the leaf structure of this and I think it'll be really fun to cut those off and put them in. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. I actually pressed uh, power on, on the uh, uh, my little handheld uh, device here for the camera. But anyhow, I'm really excited about uh, this eucalyptus tree. I think it'll, little cuttings from this will be really pretty in arrangements. And then over here to grow kind of and hide this ugly fence is I have a thornless blackberry. Um, it is alive. <laughs> Believe me, it's alive. Um, you can actually see little buds starting to form a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know if those got nipped in the frost or whatnot, but it's alive. I can tell it's alive. Believe me, just trust me. Just trust me on it. It's alive, okay? <laughs> I sound so desperate. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Anyhow, that is today's garden tour. I'll just walk back through um, everything. And you know, winter, like I know I said this in my last video, but winter is just a really great time to look at your space and see where the holes are at and also just dream, keep dreaming. And you know, if you have a hard time even doing that during winter, what I would recommend is to just, um, is their neighbor's chickens? <laughs> Uh, what I would recommend is to just, uh, this year, take pictures constantly throughout uh, from all the different angles of your garden and bloom and how pretty it is. And then when you get to winter, if you feel after several months of winter and things are just looking barren and dead and you feel discouraged, go back and pull up those photos and remind yourself how well your garden did um, when it was growing and in bloom and then that that's something that helps me feel because sometimes I look at the garden when it's you know like this and I'm like oh I'm a failure what am I doing <laughs> like I don't know what I'm doing I'm killing everything nothing's alive and I'll go back and look at pictures of things when things were alive in that same space and it, and throughout the the season um and it just encourages me that it's just the season we're in right now and it's okay <laughs> for things to take a rest and to um not perform and um it's okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay again. So anyhow, that's all I have to say for today. I will uh, see y'all in the next video. Bye.